with electrical wires and began beating and torturing her. To ensure that no one outside heard her screams, they used dirty rags as gags as they inflicted pain on her by burning her flesh with plastic or candle wax. And Detectives just called me and they told me that, you know, they found her and that she, she's, she's been shot. A group of teens set out on a seemingly innocent adventure, but what they found might shock you. They were using an app called Randonautica, which randomly generates different locations for its users and sends them on adventures to discover new things. Unfortunately for these teens, what they discovered was creepy and terrifying. Randonautica app brought them to a beach in Seattle. As they were walking near the shore, they spotted a black suitcase on a pile of rocks next to the water and decided to go investigate. According to the TikTok, they were joking around that the suitcase could have money or something valuable in it. Perhaps they thought it was part of the adventure given to them by the app that they were using. As they approached the suitcase, they noticed a foul smell coming from it. One of the girls there used a stick to open the suitcase, and immediately the group was taken aback by the extreme odor. In the suitcase, you could see a black trash bag wrapped around something. Though from the look of it, it is unclear what the contents are. They suspected that it could have been a deceased body but they were hoping it was just rotting food. They didn't want to take the chance and decided to call the police to report it. Later on, they drove by the crime scene and saw several police cars and first responders. The police did in fact find human remains in the suitcase, as well as a duffel bag nearby, which also contained human remains. The original caption of the TikTok was, something traumatic happened that changed my life. It has since been deleted. This TikTok and call to the police led to a murder investigation. Seattle police detective Mark Jameson described the scene as quote, we're glad the video was out there. We spoke to the people involved and they corroborated some of the information. The kids found bag on beach. It smelled. They called 911. Officers got out there in about an hour and a half and then officers did further investigation, then discovered that it was probably remains and called the detectives and the medical examiner's office. It was later on discovered that the remains in the suitcase belonged to a 27-year-old Austin Wenner and 35-year-old Jessica Lewis. According to the King County Medical Examiner's Office, Lewis and Wenner had been beaten and then shot. They were just inseparable. You know, through the, the good times and the hard times, you got one, you got the other. And they were just in sync with each other like that. They both died from their wounds before being dismembered. Wenner and Lewis were in a relationship and had been renting a room from a man named Michael Lee Dudley. On the day of the murder, there had been a 911 call made to the police. It was one of Dudley's neighbors, who reported hearing a man saying, quote, Please don't do this, just let me leave, as well as several gunshots. The police originally responded to the call, but they left when no one answered at the door. Sometime after the bodies were discovered, police received a search warrant for Dudley's home. Detectives claimed that they found blood in the room that Wenner and Lewis had rented, as well as bullet holes and rounds of ammunition. They had also noticed that the room had been recently repainted. Dudley was questioned on the state of the room, and he had no answer for the bullet holes, but he claimed the blood was when Lewis had cut herself. Shortly after this, 26-year-old Dudley was arrested with initial charges of two counts of first-degree murder. Due to the heinous nature of the crimes and the threat he posed to the community, Dudley's bail was set at $5 million. This wasn't Dudley's first run-in with the police, as he did have criminal history. Throughout his life, he had been charged with crimes such as DUI, vehicle theft, and a felony drug conviction. The exact motive of the murder was unclear. However, it was found out that Dudley had been having disputes with the couple over unpaid rent. Jessica Lewis's aunt, Gina Jeshka, was outspoken on the murder and demanded justice. I want, I want people to know who they were. Who they were. And they were good-hearted people. She said, quote, Nothing will bring Jessica and Austin back, and they certainly didn't deserve their lives to be taken so young. How their bodies were treated after death is incomprehensible. We are afraid the motives are far more sinister than owing somebody $1,500 for rent. Whatever the real motives were, the victim's families and Dudley's neighbors were all left in shock. One neighbor said, quote, I can't fathom the thought that he would do that. With the effort of the community, the police, and a TikTok video, the alleged killer had been put behind bars. Oh boy, look at this guy, man. I would not expect this dude to be a, a person who would steal a car for one. I mean, yeah, anybody can do murder, but this type of, you don't think he was the type of guy to steal a car. Look at him, he don't look like the type to steal a car. And I mean, I can see the DUI, I can see that. I can see the murder, you know what I'm saying? 
you can't put that past anybody nowadays, but at the same time, I just don't see a car theft. But that's sad. I know it's way far more personal than like they said, than you owe somebody 15, somebody owe you $1,500, man. Nah, it's a good thing that uh, they was able to capture this guy and whoever sent these kids on this hunt, this chase. I don't even know about that. I'm just happy I did find this story and we're gonna see uh, more interesting things to come. We've got breaking news right now. At least 10 people are dead after a mass shooting near Los Angeles Saturday night. Cops say they were called at about 10.20 p.m. local time last night to a dance hall in Monterey Park, California. A Lunar New Year celebration had just wrapped up on a main street nearby. Los Angeles County Sheriff Robert Luna described the scene. When officers arrived at the location, they observed numerous victims and patrons in the business parking lot. Additional officers made entry into the business and located numerous gunshot victims. Monterey Park Fire Department responded to the scene and started to treat the injured. The gunman was able to kill five men and five women before escaping. Ten others were injured. About 20 minutes later, police say an armed man walked into another dance hall in the nearby city of Alhambra, but was disarmed by the crowd there before fleeing. As of Sunday afternoon, it's unclear if the two incidents are related. Also as of Sunday afternoon, police were still searching for the gunman, who is said to be an Asian American man between 30 and 50 years old. It's unclear what his motive may have been or if this was a hate crime. We don't know if this is specifically a hate crime defined by law, but who walks into a dance hall and guns down 20 people? Um, the description we have now is of a male Asian. Uh, uh, does that matter? I don't know. I can tell you that everything's on the table. This is the 33rd mass shooting in 2023 and the most deadly mass shooting since Uvalde last May. When we get more details, we'll update here. They tied her up and tortured her for weeks, feeding and burning her flesh with candle wax and plastic. Then when she died, they cut up her body into pieces and stuffed her skull inside a giant Hello Kitty doll. In my 21 years in the police force, I have never seen such a cruel case of someone tortured to such an extent. This is the horrifying case of Fan Man Yi, the girl whose decapitated head was left inside a Hello Kitty doll. Fan Man Yi was a nightclub hostess in Hong Kong who had an extremely difficult life that led her to become a substance addict. One day while at work, she stole some money from a guy called Chan Man Lok, a notorious narcotics dealer and leader of an organized crime ring. When Man Lok found out, he demanded that she pay back everything she had stolen plus interest of $10,000. Fan managed to pay back this money she had stolen but could not raise the interest. She begged Man Lok to give her more time, but he refused. And what he did next was so horrific that it left the entire nation reeling in shock. In March 1999, Man Lok sent out two of his goons, Leong Xing Cho and Leong Wai Lun, to kidnap Fan and bring her to him. His initial plan was to pimp Fan out to his friends until she paid back all the money she owed him. But later, he changed his mind and decided to make her suffer. Man Lok and his goons took Fan to an abandoned apartment. They tied her up with electrical wires and began beating and torturing her. To ensure that no one outside heard her screams, they used dirty rags as gags as they inflicted pain on her by burning her flesh with plastic or candle wax and hitting her with anything they could find. At the time, Man Lok was dating a 13-year-old girl called Ah Fong, who would later go to the police and tell them the horrific details of what happened to Fan. She said that she also participated in hitting Fan in the head multiple times, thinking that it was for fun. How messed up is that? This torture and abuse went on for weeks until Fan was too weak to move or even cry out. At this point, these sick 
monsters decided to tie her up and leave her suspended in the air so they could use her as a human punching bag. So they tied up her wrists with electric cords and tied up the other end to the ceiling fan, and they would leave her there for hours, sometimes even overnight. On April 15, 1999, after a month of unimaginable anguish, Fan Man Lee finally succumbed to her injuries. Now you would think that after everything they had done to her, these sadists would finally leave her alone. But they didn't. In fact, what they did next was so sick and twisted that it continues to haunt people to this day. When they realized that she was dead, the savages placed her inside a bathtub and cut her up into pieces using a saw. And as if that's not sick enough, they actually boiled the body parts using the same kitchen utensils that they would use to cook their dinner. Some sources even say that they cooked their dinner side by side with the body parts and used the same stirring spoon. Once they were done boiling the remains, they threw them away with the household garbage, but left the half-cooked head, which they then stuffed inside the oversized Hello Kitty mermaid doll and sewed it in. But they were not yet done. They actually fed the remaining parts to the dogs and kept the internal organs in the fridge. The lead detective in the case later told reporters that Fan's killing was the most gruesome case he had ever seen. About a year after the incident, Ah Fong went to the police after claiming that she was being haunted by Fan's ghost. She led the cops to the apartment where they recovered Fan's skull, one tooth, and some internal organs. Chan Man Lok and his goons were then arrested and charged with Fan's murder. During their trial, Ah Fong testified against them, giving all the gory details of what took place in that apartment. However, the men completely denied it claiming that Fan had died of a substance overdose and that they only chopped her body because they were afraid of getting incriminated for her death. Unfortunately, due to the state of Fan's remaining body parts, the medical examiners could not determine what had actually killed her, although there was no doubt that she had been tortured. So the men were found guilty of a lesser crime of manslaughter and were sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole in 20 years. While giving the sentence, the judge said that he'd never seen such a and heinous case. Ever in Hong Kong in recent years has a court heard of such cruelty, depravity, callousness, brutality, violence, and viciousness perpetrated by a human being on another human being. That was back in 2000, meaning that the men are probably out by now. However, one of them was sent back to jail in August 2022 after he was accused of incidentally assaulting his friend's 10-year-old daughter. After the horrific murder, there were reports that the apartment building in which this crime took place was haunted by the ghost of Fan Man Yi. People started moving out of the building and it remained vacant for several years until it was demolished in September 2012.